Here we are with Preeti. How's it going, Preeti? Hi, Namaste. How are you? Very good, Namaste. <laughs> In, unless you guys have been under a rock, Preeti is a globetrotting ambassador actress. She's the head of many different, or rather, I shouldn't say the head of, but the face of many different conglomerates. And uh, she's come quite a far way having started in the IT business and jumping straight over into award-winning actressdom. Wouldn't you say that's kind of like a pretty good picture of it? Yes. Well done. I'm impressed. Thank you. Now, would you say that that's a pretty good indication of how drastic your life has changed? It has. And you want to, I think, come closer. <laughs> oh, maybe you want to sit down? Oh no, this is cool. Oh, this is good. All right. So, you know, my life is, my journey has been so incredible from investment banking in Sydney to being a multimedia personality here in Hollywood. It's been a real journey and it's been divinely guided uh, the whole way. And I'm really honored to be on my path, living my authentic life and following my dreams and my life purpose. So I feel so blessed. Yeah. Now, a lot of people have never done any IT. IT, for those who don't know, as far as I know, it's like dealing with gadgetry, computers, technology, is that correct? Well, IT is information technology. I was an investment banker, and then I moved uh, to management consulting, but my undergraduate degree that I have is in, uh, it's in uh, information and communications technology, and I also have a degree in business marketing. And then I have an honors research degree in electronic marketing. So my speciality was, you know, combining technology with business and marrying the two. And and then of course I joined a bank, and uh, then I moved into management consulting, which was quite different. And anyway, now I'm doing something really different. <laughs> but I, it's it's a joy. You know, every day it's a new day, I work for myself, I make my own schedules, I travel when I want, where I want. Uh, yeah. Now, a lot of people are going to try to figure out how does a young lady come way from Australia and eventually wind up in Hollywood. Now, let me see if I can help start it off. My understanding is you started out as a student, then you know you were a bright student, Yes. so then you jumped into higher learning, but then you jumped into banking, and then you had this, this, uh, I guess, burning desire to st stick your big toe into the waters of modeling and acting, so then you started studying, and if my history is correct, since you're from Australia, this might be one of the reasons why you met Rob Crow. is that correct? Did Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe. Yes. <laughs> no, very good. I was a very good student. I was 16 when I started university. I graduated at the age of 20 with two degrees wow. and a scholarship to study for a PhD, which I turned down because I wanted to work in the private sector. And uh, after several years in, uh, in the private sector, uh, I knew that it wasn't my life purpose. So I uh, became very spiritual at that time, I really was trying to find myself. And I realized that I wanted to uh, be in entertainment and act and write and direct. And yes, at that same time, I also won a bunch of beauty pageants. I started modeling. I was doing commercials all over. And uh, and I, yeah, I was represented by Russell Crowe's first agent, actually. Yeah. He's, he's Australian agent at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had a dream life. And then I won a scholarship to come to New York Boom. to study at this film academy. And then, as they say, life is it took off. history. Yeah. Now, the rest is history. Yeah. Now, in, in between that, you started doing um, movies that took you over to Asia, though. Yes, I've uh, done Bollywood and Hollywood. I've shot in Australia. I've worked in Europe. I worked in Dubai, where, where I grew up. Mm -hmm. So I've probably worked in four or five different continents you know, in TV, film, and commercials, and beauty campaigns and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, fairly young to be doing all of that. So things just look, I'm such an open person, and my life has been really blessed because I look, I expect miracles. Mm -hmm. And I, not only do I believe in them, I actually am expecting that they're going to happen to me every day, and they do. So I'm truly honored. Very cool. Yeah. Now, when you won those five awards that were given to you by Jackie Chan, yes. Which uh, event was that? And okay, which and movies it, was those for? It was for? three awards, and uh, <laughs> it was at the Asia Pacific Film Festival. 
and I had gone there actually, I, I was a, a delegate uh, and on the board of this uh, incredible um, organization that uh, had invited me for this film festival and uh, Jackie Chan was the guest of honor that evening mm -hmm. but I was representing an Indian movie that ended up winning all these amazing awards and I was the face of that movie although I wasn't actually in the movie okay. but because I was uh, representing that movie on behalf of it and it won everything and I was the only one present from that uh, you know dispensation so mm -hmm. I thought uh, you know, I, I, I was a star of the bell of the ball, I was a star of the show. <laughs> yeah. It's really quite a trip. So I know what it feels like to be very famous because I was overnight, I was on TV, millions of people had seen me. This is in China, you know, you can understand the scope of things. Uh, the next day I was on the front page of every newspaper. Uh, at the event there were hundreds of photographers from all around the world, they all wanted to interview me. And I did a photo shoot with all my awards, and it was a trip. I'll never forget it. <laughs> now, what kind of guy is Jackie Chan? The most <laughs> humble, sweet, is he uh, funny? Grace, gracious, I would say, uh -huh. uh, person. has a lot of humility. I think he came from nowhere, and he really made it to the heights of success. His culture is very much with him, I think. He had good upbringing, you can tell, uh, good, good person, you know, he's one of those people, you know, when good things happen to him, you're happy. I'm not trying to control you. Now, I guess a lot of people, Please, like me, it just popped in my head. No, Everyone knows Rush Hour 4 is coming up. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Good to know. Yeah. So it's like, maybe you should, you know, knock on his door and say, come on now, you've had three of them. We know each other. Look at my record. Oh, maybe I should reach out and I should send him... Because I had to take a lot of photos with him as well, so perhaps I can send our beautiful photos together to refresh his memory. Plus, I'm, I'm going to sure send this. Me, yeah. I'm, I'm going to send this to him over social media too. Try that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, who knows how many more they're going to do? I know. I'm surprised that they have a fourth. So. Well, I'm just saying it because uh, Jackie and uh, Taylor, I think that's his name, Chris. Uh, Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker. Yeah. They were online doing like the four fingers, you know, so a lot of people took that to mean four. Yeah. So it, it's a trip how far that thing has gone. And well, I think this is the thing with Hollywood, you know, I'm actually not a fan of, of this franchises and all that. I like really thought provoking, deep, independent or even commercial, but I like movies that are deep, that have a message that are uh, talking about an important topic. Mm -hmm. I, I like, I'm not a big fan of comics and sci-fi and all that. It doesn't do it for me. However, I'm sure acting in one of those movies is probably a whole lot of fun. Probably a whole lot of fun, yeah, definitely. Speaking of, before we get a little bit more serious, because yes. I know your whole uh, portfolio is very, very diversified. Yes. Give us indication, I've, I've written about you yes. and you've been on my TV show. But I want people to know how many different organizations you're the face of uh, worldwide, from D Dubai to wow. different jewelry people. Wonderful. Okay. So I have my own company called Omnia Entertainment. Okay. And that's uh, my, my, my company, and it's an umbrella company for uh, the various uh, things that I do. Okay. I'm writing a book, I'm a public speaker, I have a radio show, and uh, I'm a global brand ambassador. Uh, and of course, uh, an artist, so all of these come under Omni Entertainment. Uh, but I am an, a, a, a celebrity ambassador for Safe Passage, which is um, an organization uh, to help women uh, that have uh, suffered uh, domestic violence abuse. And then I'm also an ambassador for Face Forward, which is also an incredible organization. Same thing, you know, domestic abuse and violence, not just for women, but also men and children, because mm -hmm. they also can be victims of such abuse True. all around the world. Right. And uh, that, and um, uh, my, I've started a foundation many years ago when during a trip to Cambodia and Thailand, because I was just touched by the beautiful children there, and I didn't realize how many orphans and sort of amputees and just kids who have lost a limb 
uh, in especially Cambodia because they had all the landmine situation. Mm -hmm. So you know, when you go to these beautiful countries, you see, it's so wonderful. But you see these kids; they have a beautiful smile on their face, but their lives have been marred, you know, with so much pain and tragedy. And uh, I, I I've met groups and groups of orphans and visited a lot of orphanages actually. And I, they were so sweet. They they really like gave you know they kind of held on to me and stuff. But I thought you know, geez, if I could ever start a foundation to help anyone it would be the helpless children that that can't help themselves so yeah. i started that a long time ago and uh, i've supported other charities and stuff and i'm also very spiritual of course interested in various spiritual and philosophical causes mm -hmm. and uh, i'm by the way i'm proud to say that i'm a recently certified dharma ambassador and cool. Congratulations. Uh, dharma ambassador is someone who is certified to speak uh, on a public platform about Eastern philosophy and Eastern faith and traditions. You know, it's my lineage. I come from India, of course, which is, I would say, the cradle of spirituality in the world because all the Indic faiths like Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and Sikhism came out of India and they came out of the, the same uh, fundamental uh, philosophy of Sanatana Dharma. So I'm, I'm very knowledgeable in this area and I already have written and spoken on this topic uh, all around the world but um, you know I'm, I'm certified to do so now and I hope that this year I'll be doing a lot more of uh, that you know hopefully speaking all, all around the world so speaking of which I must say that I have a lot of international trips coming up so I just wanted to share some of them with you well before um, we talk yeah. about the future Let's yes. touch right, on the past because you've. You can and, leave, yes. <laughs> yeah, you were in uh, Dubai quite a bit. You're yes. also in Vietnam. Um, I'll be going back to Vietnam uh, in November. I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us, give us some insight into what you did there and what you uh, what you learned from your. Oh, wonderful! Vietnam was special. Oh. My first time there. So I was invited by a pretty prestigious think tank, global think tank, the global. Global Summit called Horasis. Okay. And Horasis is uh, run by the former director of the World Economic Forum in Davos. And uh, uh, so he now runs Horasis. It's very similar to Davos, but it focuses on emerging markets rather than markets that have already reached there and are, and are almost plateauing or declining, I would say. So uh, this this think tank meets five or six times a year in very exotic locations all around the world and you've got a group of between 500, between 500 and 1,000 CEOs, mm -hmm. uh, top CEOs from wow. everywhere coming and meeting and we have talks, we have panels, it's a talk shop, it's, uh, we talk about uh, urgent matters that are affecting the world at large, we have global leaders, presidents, heads of states, gurus, you know, spiritual leaders. And I was on a panel, I was asked to speak on cultural diversity, religion, language. And I was on the panel with some famous spiritual gurus from India, I was with a Swami, you know, a monk, and uh, incredible people from everywhere. And the moderator was a very famous uh, professor of philosophy from New York. So I spoke, I spoke my mind, I'm, you know, known to be very outspoken and mm -hmm. Uh, you know, got, made, got a lot of love, made a lot of friends, and got invited to speak in much, many more places after that, actually. But uh, they've invited me again to speak in Vietnam, uh, in Ho Chi Minh City, and cool. I really love Ho Chi Minh, the food is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very excited to go back there in November, and I don't know what I shall be speaking about, but I'm sure it'll be a very um, timely and uh, fascinating conversation. Cool. Now, didn't you do some work, and that was fascinating, by the way. Congratulations Thank for that. You. I think I read somewhere that you had done something in Russia for MTV. Oh, my God, yes. This was in 2012. I was actually asked to be the English host, the official host for the Moscow International Film Festival. So you speak Russian? You know what? I did prepare <laughs> a, a little bit of Russian for that talk because although I hosted in English, at the end of my event, I was there for a week. I had the time of my life. I was very touched by the people and by the city. But um, I just thought that I want to sh sh show them my love. 
and I had prepared a wonderful speech in Russian and I actually gave that talk in Russian, the speech at the end of the event and the whole auditorium went berserk, they went ballistic and uh, MTV Russia had actually, uh, they were the media outlet for that, one of the media outlets for that event so they covered me and oh my god, they actually, I, I was on national news, I was in all the, <laughs> the, the national news channels because they interviewed me and they showed my footage and everything and again I became another star there, so uh -huh. it was China first and then I had my fame in Russia and um, then in, in Australia I had won several beauty pageants so I was in all the newspapers there as well for all winning the titles and uh, you know being a, an international media and all that so I have I'm kind of famous in different countries for completely different things that's cool very interesting yeah. very diversified yeah. now um, was Putin there when you were there <laughs> <laughs> you know, I believe he was a leader. I think he was a leader in 2012. I, of course, didn't meet. I would love, honored. Look, I'm very diplomatic, and having worked in sort of, I'm very familiar with geopolitics, and uh, you know, I, I I love to be a real diplomat one day in terms of serious, you know, UN level or even beyond. Mm -hmm. And I am of the opinion that. You uh, take meetings with everyone, you know, you speak to everyone, even the enemy or your adversary. So people who say, no, I don't want to have a conversation with this leader or that leader, I think they're s selling themselves short because it's only through conversation that anything can even happen. Right. So I, I would love to have a, my dream is to interview all these great leaders one day, you know, all, all sitting together on a panel. I think I could do a great job. Yeah, I think so too. Now, we kind of touched on vaguely your titles, but now your main title is Miss, Miss Australia. In, no, Miss India International. I always mix it up. I, for some reason, I keep saying That's, Miss Australia International. Well, India. I also won Miss uh, India Australia and Miss India Portugal. I won, and then I competed in a bunch of other ones too. And I was also Miss Pinup in, in, in Australia a long time ago. Okay. So the one that I keep mixing up is Miss India International? Yes. Okay. Cause I, but now I think I do have a little bit of retaining info because there was that in Australia did you say Australia Miss India, India uh, Miss India Australia yeah that was yeah, several yeah. years ago okay right? so if it was a multiple <laughs> choice I might have gotten that right yeah yeah hey, it's, all, it's all good yeah. they're just a a, a, a a means to an end for me they're just another platform where some other doors can open and quite frankly they I don't think that they have been the platforms that have really given me the real opportunities in my life. I think for some people it may have in my case. Mm. No, because I think I was meant to do far bigger things and I was going to achieve a lot more on many other levels. So, you know, winning a pageant didn't really do all that. No. <laughs> well, um, I think all the acting that you have has, you know, gotten you into the mainstream um, and, you know, gotten you into a situation where you can actually help people, which is yeah. what apparently you like to do. Yeah, because my mission is to really um, not just inspire and empower people, but be, really be a global leader, you know, in that way. Be a role model, be, a, be an ambassador. And I'm moving into international relations and diplomacy. Right. But Let's now, but I, I still, last time I saw you was on a Heineken commercial. Yes. And then you did a... Um, I did a bunch of commercials most, recently. Uh, HP. Okay. Uh, uh, I did several for Heineken and Dos Equis. Discovery uh, or no? Um, Pepsi, Apple, Coke, you know, yeah. Wasn't it when you did McDonald's, for? I think, yeah. Wasn't it like a historical? What's the historical? National Geographic. Right. What so did I, you do? I, did, I was on a very popular show on National Geographic. What did you do? Uh, it was actually a show that was debunking uh, mediums and. Uh, I wish we could debunk this debunker. Yeah, mediums and psychics uh, and all that. It's funny, I do think that some people have a gift, but I think most people just are very good readers. They read their clients very well. Uh -huh. And this show kind of debunked how anyone can uh, just throw generic questions to the client and make them believe that they're, they're reading their mind kind of thing. It's mm -hmm. very fascinating. But I was a part of that. It was like a mini documentary almost. A lot of fun. You know? Very cool. Now on that note, before we go further, have you ever had any 
supernatural uh, or spooky type of occurrences in your life? It's interesting. Um, I do think that there are disembodied spirits out there. I do think that they are spirits in limbo. You know, they're like hanging around. Uh, there's a lot of beings, I believe, they're on a, on a different frequency, mm -hmm. but they're here on the earth with us. We just can't see them. Uh, some people can. They're also on a different frequency. I do believe in, you know, extraterrestrials, interterrestrials, and all of this phenomena. And uh, I mean, one has to keep an open mind. So uh, that being said, I have had a lot of divine experiences in my life. So I, I felt the presence of the divine and the blessings of the angels and universal consciousness. You know? So like I felt that uh, I was being heard, I was being listened to. Um, there was a time once where, you know, there have been a few points in my life where I had, I was lying down, my eyes were closed, but I felt a gentle nudge. Oh. When I opened my eyes, there was no one there. But it was just something telling me that I'm okay. So I've had several of those experiences. Mm -hmm. But haunted house experiences with spirits and ghosts, no, thankfully no, because I, I could <laughs> see how that could be very uh, traumatic for people. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> Now, I wanted to touch on something that I've heard you say quite a bit, and you say that you expect miracles and they happen. Yes. Now, you always, every time I'm around, you always say, I'm going to manifest yes. this and that. Yes, I'm a manifesting machine. And it tends to happen when you say that. So, what exactly, for people that are watching, they're like, damn, I need to manifest a new job. I need to manifest a new boyfriend, a new yeah, wife, yeah. a new, a new uh, money yeah. changing, sure. uh, deal with my children, deal with my yeah, husband. Yeah. How would you tell them that they should go in this in this direction? What, what so the, the fir there's a few steps to a manifestation. I think the first one is uh, believing that you deserve it. Because a lot of people, you know, they visualize, they meditate, they pray, they long for things, but they don't actually believe that they can get it and they don't believe that they're worth it. So the first step is belief, right? And then you uh, actually have to allow it to happen. You have to allow it into your life. I think the universe is always trying to give us things. And most people are their own worst enemy. They're in the way. And they somehow just actually block wonderful things from happening to themselves. Mm. Interesting. Because they're too busy running around chasing their tail. Mm -hmm. So you so believe that you're worth it. Know what you want. And then allow it to happen. Receive it. Uh, and then the third step is give thanks. Mm -hmm. Give thanks for what you have mm -hmm. and give thanks for what you're about to receive. Mm. And uh, give thanks for what you've just received. Mm. Because gratitude is attitude and action. It's the most powerful energy is when you have true gratitude. Cool. Because the universe just lights up. And it's like more, more is coming to you because you honor what you have. Cool. So I think people don't do any of these steps sometimes or mm -hmm. they, they miss out on a few of them. I they just hope you. that you know, the red Ferrari is going to land from the sky into their lap. You know, it, I mean, it can, believe me, it can, it, it, and it has happened to people, but, but, but they had these steps of believing, knowing what they want, you know, allowing it, being specific, being grateful, having humility. And also, I think a big um, principle that people really forget is when manifestation is concerned is karmic grace. Mm. Now, karma is a term it's a Hindu term, it's a Sanskrit word, mm -hmm. it means, uh, it doesn't mean a law of, you know, uh, the universe, like what you get, what you sow is what you reap. Mm -hmm. Karma literally means work and action. So in Hinduism, karma is uh, a huge concept. The principle, fundamental principle of Hinduism is karma. Everything is karma, you know, and your whole lifetime is karmic. You know, you're back in this lifetime in the way that you are with, you, with all, with whatever you've inherited, uh, because you're here to learn the highest lessons, and mm -hmm. things will happen in the best way. So you uh, really grow and learn the most. You know? But one principle within karma is karmic grace, and and this explains why they are billionaires who are bad people, and you think. Why is that person so rich and successful? And we all know so many good people who are broke mm -hmm. and suffering because they are, I think, things that are beyond the, the human eye. It's, you know, what's their soul's journey? You know, where have they been? What, what, where are they going? Uh, 
uh, what this pit stop of this incarnation, what does that mean in the grand scheme of things? Mm -hmm. So karmic grace is something that supersedes all of these principles of manifestation, I think, because essentially if something is meant for you, it's going to come. Mm -hmm. And if something is not meant for you, it's either never going to come or it's going to be so challenging to get it but by the time you do get it you're completely exhausted mm -hmm. so karmic grace explains a lot in life so it's a, it also kind of makes you realize that hey you're not in the driver's seat you know you can do, just do your best but i think there's a, a divine play that's going on which is leela the divine play and you're playing your part all you can do is play your part the best that you can and just be love and light mm -hmm. Um, I, we touched on something earlier. Uh, we're going to make a movie together. Yes. But I'm so excited. Me too. And you said that you want to talk about politics, but I'm like, maybe we shouldn't go too far. Yes. Because, I mean, we have to leave something for the movie. That's you know what I mean? true. That's true. And also, look, I think we are just living in, in a, an environment where freedom of speech, freedom of expression is really being uh, attacked. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think we're on the verge of potentially losing this. I'm seeing it already in campuses and, you know, with kids all around the world. Kids are, you know, they're forced to or they're taught to think a certain way. And they're not taught to have diversity of opinion. And this is very scary because if you can't be safe in a college campus, the big bad world out there is going to eat you and spit you right back. Now, what about, um, how do you feel about the sudden, well it's not real sudden, but it seems like recently people have, or well, little kids have gone from just being uh, bullied to killing themselves. I don't oh, think that know, was like that previously. Suicide is such a big problem all around the world and I think uh, the juvenile suicide is, is really it's scary because adults I mean, they do sometimes share with people or at least they can speak to another human being about the problems with kids cannot voice it, mm -hmm. right? So even they don't even tell the parents what's up with them and they're being bullied at school or whatever, they don't tell the teachers, mm -hmm. they, they're ashamed, they don't tell the parents, they don't tell their friends. See, they, and, and you know, when you're an adult, I think you learn to cope, you have self-empathy, you can uh, some kind of transmute it, mm -hmm. you kind of throw yourself into other, your work or whatever, but as a kid, you don't have that luxury. All, you, you, you have to face your fear every waking moment, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's very sad and the sad thing is that it's not just happening in some developing country or some sub-Saharan sub African city, it's actually happening in the richest and the most prosperous and developing countries in the world. So that's something very alarming. And very, 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 very sad. I was speaking to someone a couple of days ago, maybe my view is kind of dark, but they said, well, how do these kids even know about suicide, and how do they know about blah, 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 so I was like, I hate to say it, but it's the parents, yes. it's got to be the parents. That's right, not, not enough good upbringing, and also the internet is at everyone's disposal, and it really should be a tool, you guys. but it's, it's it, yes, it is a tool, but you, you can oh, learn how to build a bomb online, yeah. so a tool for what? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. Now, um, I'd like to just go back just a little bit to your acting, because that's how we met. Yes. I used to do a show in Hollywood, and in fact, you were the one that opened my eyes to something. I don't know if you, were, if you recall that. Really? Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to bring it up on the air, but <laughs> someone was trying to play hide and seek with me, and then you, you called them and said, uh, excuse me, blah, 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 and that, that turned the whole tables on everything. Do, do you recall what that was? This was many years ago, right? Yeah. If you don't recall, I'll, I'll tell you later. Yeah, tell me later. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was pretty wild. But basically, someone got their hands caught in the cookie jar, and you showed me so they couldn't get the cookie out of the jar. I like that. And then the next thing I know, there were more cookies. Uh oh. <laughs> but you never did get to get on that show. But you helped me with the new one, and this is going to be on that one as well. Now let's get back into because I I know your heart and soul is into ambassadorship. Yes. But your talents, you've acted, yep. you're still acting. Yes. What kind of role are you looking to really sink your pearly whites into? Oh, that's a good, uh, good question. Look, uh, after so many years in this business, now I'm actually very open and 
grateful for whatever comes my way. I think 10 years ago, I was like, no, I want to be in the Bond movie or this or that. Now I'm like, hey, work is work and work gets more work and there's integrity and respect in every role. So I, I think my ideology has changed as well. I'm open, you know, I do like, I would like, like to play a spy or espionage or political satire, political drama would be fun. Political would be good, maybe a dip diplomat. Because I could do that in real life, you know. Uh, but I'm open, there's so many amazing roles out there anyway. Yeah. Could you see yourself behind the scenes directing, producing? Um, not directing, but I see my I'm in the process of developing my own TV show and I'd be I'd be a producer, I'd be the creator and I'd be the host. So that I see myself. Okay. Can you ever see yourself going back to banking, IT? No, definitely not. And I still have dear friends who do that. And we still keep in touch. And some of them have moved on to other interesting things. But um, that was the, that was a, a, a phase in my life. It taught me a lot. It taught me discipline, professionalism, integrity, honesty. A lot of qualities that you, do, you don't find here in Hollywood. You know, you don't find them among, among this sort of fraternity. Because a lot of people who work in Hollywood don't have degrees. They have not worked in other jobs. A lot of them may not even know how the world really is out there. Mm -hmm. They're so consumed in this little bubble, which is not reality, by the way. It's quite an illusion. Right, right. Uh, I can go in and out of the illusion, but uh, some of them cannot get out of it. So I am very grateful for my phase uh, in private sector. It taught me a lot. And ultimately, it is show business is a business. And you can't forget about that. Mm -hmm. How do you... Well, I was going to ask a question. Let me see the best way to ask this question. Now, you appear to be a person who's come from a family of intellectual people, yes. not people that are just going to up and just very, very follow smart a dream. Very, very educated people, yes. How have they... When you first started, what, how did they look upon it? And now that you've had success, how have how That's do you look at it? That's interesting. They are, I'm the luckiest person in the world because my parents are extremely loving, supporting, caring. They've always been. And when I first told them, I remember telling my mother, well, she knew that I was very unhappy with my what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So when I did share with her, I think she just lit up. And she said, you want to do that? You want to go to New York and pursue this? Yeah, my love, my, my support is my, you have my blessings, you know. Uh, I'm sure she was heartbroken in the sense that I would be going away from her. Mm -hmm. But she was never uh, a naysayer. She never, uh, like, uh, persuaded me to think otherwise. So they let me free. They loved, they loved me unconditionally. But now, so many years later, after so, like, I mean, the China thing, oh my God, I, <laughs> you know, after when they saw all of, and that was the same year that I had moved, wow. right? So within six months, suddenly I was this was overnight like, boom. sensation. <laughs> they were blown away. Oh my God, I remember my, you know, my father to this day still has newspaper clippings <laughs> of me. Uh, Daddy's he, little girl? He still show, yeah, he still shows them around. And I mean, it's ridiculous. You know, I, I'm very proud. I'm touched that. <laughs> Now they are so proud of me. Now they they are they have a different mindset. They actually want me to go all the way because they know that I've sacrificed everything. Mm -hmm. So they think, you know what? 